Welcome back to Stormworks. It's time to talk about damage modeling. We are going to show off a bunch of ships and sync them, but I do want to be clear that this is going to be a technical discussion about the way that damage modeling works and why it's not very good. Uh, I did mention this briefly in the last episode. We're now making a whole episode about it because it's something that really bothers me. And I don't want to say that Stormworks is particularly bad at it. All voxel games are bad at it. But I happen to have Stormworks, and I happen to build a whole bunch of boats. Just accidentally built a whole bunch of boats. Uh, building these boats is so much fun. It's just a shame that there's no fun way to use them. So, this is the one you may have seen if you've already seen my videos. It's the first generation boat. It's called the Gremlin. Uh, it's not too shabby at all. It's got this giant turret on the back. That is an artillery turret that gives it a lot of punch when it needs it. Uh, and of course, close up, it uses these little toy pea shooters. These pea shooters, left and right, uh, they are actually substantially more dangerous than they look because the armor piercing rounds penetrate deep into the hull of a ship and blow up whatever's on the inside, causing internal fires and plenty of sinking. But they do have a downside, and that is range. Uh, they top out at about 50 meters. Past that point, you're not going to get very much in the way of damage, even with armor-piercing rounds. That's why most of my other boats have upgraded as I've gone heavier. I was deciding I wanted to build some heavier boats. So let's let's talk about a heavier boat. How about the... How about the Crown Breaker? This is the largest boat I've currently got. Um, active, I think. You know, ready for play. And it has a problem. It's the largest boat. Stormworks isn't really very well optimized, and if you have a couple of vehicles, things are going to start to slow down, especially if they are large boats. This boat is actually optimized. I optimized this boat for a minimum of physics pieces, as best I could at the time. I didn't really understand physics pieces well enough to do it perfectly, but as you can see, the front of the boat is built out of these large wedges, which is not something you get accidentally. This is an optimization that happens when you understand how to optimize your boat, at least some. So that's why the game isn't complaining about a large number of physics objects, because I have figured out how to trick the physics clumping into making even a large boat reasonable. I also removed all ropes. Turns out ropes are the devil and will make your uh, whole simulation run slower. But we're still getting a substantially worse sim speed here. So one of the things you're going to notice is that while the simulation speed is lower, the frame rate is the same. And the same thing happened in Space Engineers for the most part. Uh, the physics ticks start to take longer, which means that you move slower, you turn slower, everything feels like you're on the moon. That's not really a great feeling for a battle to have, and you're going to have this feeling anytime you've got ships larger than the Gremlin at play. This ship also rides pretty low in the water. Uh, that makes it very hard to destroy in some respects, but this is a second generation ship, whereas the Gremlin is a first generation ship, which means that it doesn't have quite as much staying power as a third generation ship. I'll show you in a minute. But it does have some of the same features. It's got the same basic layout as the Gremlin. The turrets are, of course, the Big Brother version. These use heavy autocannons instead of light autocannons, and the reason for the upgrade is range. I needed to be able to hit targets at to at least 500 meters, and the light autocannons just weren't cutting it. Actual damage uh, seems about the same, even though these are four heavy autocannons, uh, and ha they have a much more staying power. They, they have a lot more ammunition before they have to reload. But still, you'd think that upgrading to four heavy autocannons would radically improve the damage it doesn't appear to, because most of the damage comes from blowing up someone's engine room, which only takes one bullet. I've got these moving loader pieces behind all of the turrets on this ship. This was something I did for a while until I realized that it was expensive. It was slowing down the sim speed. So the next boat we see will not have those. But this is the turret that we came here for. This is the big Bertha. Nope, that was the wrong button. This is a relatively optimized Bertha in terms of things like if you want to hit something that is 
600 meters away or 2,500 meters away, you can tell how high you have to arc it. And this is a reasonably accurate arc calculation. Of course, it's not necessary to do an arc calculation for something that is as close as uh, this gremlin. Now, as I've mentioned, you can't destroy voxels with the damage modeling in this game. You just mark them as damaged, and then you can repair them with a welder. That's not entirely true. If you destroy the majority of a vehicle's voxels in one frame, the game thinks that it's a missile and has exploded. So it removes it from play. Otherwise, you'd have a whole bunch of spent missiles just kind of hanging around. So if you shoot a small ship with the Bertha, that causes enough damage for the game to assume that it was a missile. <laughs> I really enjoy that. I haven't managed to make it work on a larger vehicle yet, but um, it, it was fun to see. Now let's do some damage, right? Let's talk about the third generation vehicle. I think we're going to go for a fourth generation vehicle, and the generations is not... Um, it's not like the vehicle I made first, the vehicle I made second. Uh, usually there are four or five vehicles in a generation. I'm just showing you my favorites. This is the Headhunter. You notice that it's got the same basic deck plan as the others. Uh, that's because three turrets is about the maximum that the game can handle before it starts to freak out. So three turrets is what I was going with. We've got the same basic four autocannon turret here, but it's much, much simpler. You see how much simpler the physics objects are? It's not quite as simplified as I'd like it, but it's no, there's no chatter. This is something I hate. I don't know how to tell it to not do this, but there is some heuristic involved where sometimes it doesn't catch on to exactly what it's trying to optimize. Still, this is a pretty optimized boat in terms of not taking up too much of your CPU. It's got a bunch of fun features like this radar. There was a radar in the other one too. The new radar hardware is great. Uh, the radar hardware they introduced with the with the patch, uh, with the DLC, is much, much better than the chattery old garbage that we used to have. However, nobody updated their firmware. So all of the workshop examples are still using the old hardware, meaning that they don't work anymore and they're crappy. So I just threw something together, and as you can see, it works fine. This is two radars, one that's panning in front of us and one that's spinning around and around and around, uh, and that should give you a pretty good radar coverage. And of course, we've got a fully functional GPS. Piloting this thing around is, um, it's got some get up and go. You might not be able to tell because our sim speed is pretty low at this point, but uh, by the way that it moon jumped out of the water, hopefully you can tell that we are uh, moving at a prodigious clip. As I said, this has the same front turrets, more or less. It seems like they're firing slowly. They are not. They're firing at the same speed. It's just that the sim speed is so much lower. The question is, what's going on with the back turret? Well, in this case, the back turret is this. It's called the Trigun. This is a battle cannon turret, and we are just exactly at the range that I allowed it. I should allow it for a little bit more range. There's no reason for it to stop there. Um, that's just, I haven't, the, the boat is not completed and I won't be completing it. I just wanted to show it to you because it was uh, something I learned. All right, so now we should be able to target the boat, right? There it is. So battle cannons are smaller than the artillery cannons that are mounted on the gremlin. So this is actually a very lightweight turret all told. But what this has is it has speed and range. It's very easy for us to hit targets out to a kilometer with this kind of precision. And we can fire one shot every second instead of the Bertha's one shot every 20 seconds or the artillery cannons one shot every six or seven seconds. Now I'm firing low on purpose because damage below the water line is almost always better. Uh, but what we're using is armor piercing rounds. Armor-piercing rounds seem to work by, after the first impact, they spawn another round that, you know, goes deeper into the ship. And I think that that actually gets triggered when you hit the water. So if you fire below the surface of the boat, uh, the water, you're not likely to get as deep a hit. Now, this is what I was talking about with the damage modeling. 
Do you really feel like you're making any headway here? I mean, we're definitely hitting the boat. Look, that was a cool explosion, but it doesn't actually do anything or mean anything. I don't feel like I'm winning. And that's because the voxel modeling doesn't allow for the kinds of progression that a military fantasy requires. A military fantasy requires you to, um, to really have a, a strong sense of how much damage you're dealing and how much damage you can take. And we're just not getting that here. And, uh, and that is why it's just not as good. Uh, at, at that sort of thing. And this is true of all voxel damage systems. Now we're going to return the favor. We're going to fire on our buddy using the Bertha. The Bertha is several categories larger, so this should do quite a bit more damage. We are listing a little bit, so it's a little bit hard. Oh, is this a straight on shot? We're going to hit it on the nose. Okay. So you can see just how much damage that did in comparison. Um, these nose shots, however, are unlikely to really do much. Um, I guess we'll find out. I wanted to show you what happens when you hit this boat on the side, because a third generation boat that we're shooting at is built specifically to not list. Oh, see how long the Bertha takes to reload? This is a double barrel cannon and it still is like two shots every 30 seconds. There we are. That's going to have to be good enough. Ooh. Got caught in the smoke there. So here you can see that we got hit by a couple of Berthas on the front end. The nose of our ship is now pasted. But that's not actually going to do any significant damage. Uh, so. Let's talk about damage. As you can see, our other buddy, the one that we were just in, is listing rather badly. Now, we did hit it with a bunch of shots, so that's to be expected, right? Wrong. Or rather, not necessarily. This kind of listing happens uh, on my second generation ships because I didn't put them together in a way to prevent it. There is like a crumple zone here. So if you shoot the side of the ship, there is like a pumping section and a hard wall. Uh, but obviously that's not going to keep up with this kind of damage. It's never going to be keep be able to. It's that's how it's you know built uh, for game balance purposes. However, what that means is that as the port side crumple zone fills up, it lists to port, which makes things worse and worse and worse, and eventually the whole boat will overturn and sink. On the other hand, my third generation boat here. Well, I mean, we hit it on the nose, so it's not going to list either way. But it wouldn't list even if we hit it on the side, because I don't have port and starboard um, setups. I look like I do. If I were to come down here, go down into the basement and see this. Look, this, it's, uh, it's the front bilge starboard, right? Except it's not the front bilge starboard. It is, in fact, a linked bilge system. There is a, a passageway somewhere. One of these places has a passageway built into it. Is it on the front? I can't tell because it's too dark and damaged. But there is a, a, a gap leading all the way to the other side of the boat. So both the front bilge starboard and the front bilge port are actually sharing the exact same amount of water. Which means that from a physics perspective in this game, they don't tip very quickly. They do eventually tip, and then they untip. So it is some way to keep the boat from ever really capsizing. Obviously, the Bertha did quite a bit of damage to the crumple zone here, but I placed all of our protective elements, our, you know, our pumps, specifically to avoid taking damage. So you can see this is our pumping system for the area, and we got hit by three Bertha shots to the nose, and it's fully intact. Also, if you take a look, this is so annoying. This versus this. They are the exact same physical object. But for some reason, it interprets them differently. I, I don't like that. But we're going to be using small boats from now on because of that sort of nonsense. So the other thing that this boat does to keep from listing is on the second level, on the mid-decks, they've got all these rooms, right? 
these rooms often take damage. In fact, they take damage a lot more frequently than the lower decks do because they are at the waterline. And most people who are firing on you are going to be firing at your center of mass. They're going to be firing to hit you at or above the waterline. So these rooms take an extra amount of damage, and they are not linked from side to side. The port ones stay on the port. The starboard ones stay on the starboard. But um, they seem to be like no water. What, what's going on? Why isn't there any water in these? Well, they do have some pumps, but that's not going to keep up with the amount of water that you're taking on from a hole like this. No, it's this. When these things start to fill with water, the electric hatches slide open and dump that water down into the bilge, which is shared port and starboard, meaning that you really won't end up sinking. I am going to spawn in another vehicle just to try and show you exactly how much damage the third generation boats can take. And this is what happens with even the barest amount of thinking about what sort of um, physical shape you want to use. It's just like, oh yeah, you can build what is effectively a boat that never sinks because the damage modeling isn't correct for a fantasy like that. It's it, for a military fantasy. It doesn't really understand what it should do when you take damage. It really has no way to tell you that you should take damage in a way that is meaningful or interesting. So this is the boat that uh, that we were on, and if we continue to fire on it, I hit some uh, some low shots there. Oh, some high shots. A little bit more wobble than I would have expected. That's fine. Now we're hitting just below the water line, so this should be miserable. It should sink right away. You can see I'm not really getting a sense. There's no feedback. I'm not going, oh man, this is awesome. Look how much damage I'm doing. I'm not going, oh, the, sh the boat is sinking. I'm not, I'm not even sure whether I'm having any effect. Because it could be that when this boat gets hit by another blast from this battle cannon, it actually doesn't cause any additional damage. It may be that those voxels are as damaged as the battle cannon can make them. But I have no way of knowing. I can't tell how much damage I'm doing. And that's just not fun. So I've cleaned up the boat we were just on because I don't want it slowing us down. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the damage that we're seeing. We're standing on the third generation boat now. You can see that we've ripped up the side pretty good. This whole side is completely uh, um, smashed in. And you might be wondering, well, what happened to the other boat? Well, it's right over there. Can't you see it? Oh, I was wrong. It's right over there. Can't you see it? It capsized. So it didn't capsize fully, which is a little bit of a shock. But because this boat doesn't prevent itself from capsizing at all, and because it rides low in the water, it tends to sink pretty quickly, which is exactly what we've got. Now, it would be moderately fun to go down there and try and like fix up the boat. I might try and make some missions where boats that I build specifically to be fun to go down and dive into are uh, you know, sunk on purpose. Because I think that there is some fun to be had in going down and, you know, figuring out what you want out of those boats, trying to get them back online, trying to pump out rooms so that you can use welders uh, in, in a room, because you can't use a welder when it's flooded. You'd need to use an underwater welder, which might not be possible, or you might not have a scuba suit or something. Uh, maybe you have to power something back on to get the bilges working again, so you've got to run power from your submarine into the boat, but you've got to repair the power conduits first. A lot of cool stuff you could do, and I'm really, really thinking about focusing on that. Did you see that, how it suddenly tipped to the side there? Yeah, that's interesting. I think a wave hit it. Anyway, um, I'm looking forward to that. I think that that might be fun to do, but right now I'm still addicted to making these boats. These boats are enormous fun to make. They're just not very much fun to play. I saturated this boat. I hit it with Big Bertha shots, I hit it with Battle Cannon shots, and it's fine. It's tilted slightly. 
because I built it to last. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that that's a big hole in the way that this game works. I shouldn't be able to build a boat that effectively. And even at this point, I could bring the boat back online. So, you know, like, oh, I want to keep shooting people. So we'll just repair the turret. We'll bring the turret back online so that we can, um, you know, return fire. All of these things can be repaired completely. It's just a matter of targeting all the pieces, and there you go. You're back up. We could even bring the Big Bertha turrets back online if we'd like. And, of course, what you're supposed to do is uh, run around... Oh, okay, so we're tipping enough now that we're starting to take on some water there. We'll just close that. What we're supposed to do is run around doing this, which we're now fixing up the damage on the inside of the boat. But you can see how slowly this damage is fixing in comparison. Do you want to know why this damage is so slow? This is Big Bertha damage. Or maybe stacked... Um, I think this is actually probably stacked uh, battle cannon damage. So as the damage level goes up, it takes longer and longer to repair. And the Bertha damage actually ran out of juice. The Bertha damage takes a long time to repair. That's how long a Bertha hit takes. So you could literally take 10 minutes to repair all of the damage done by a Bertha. That is pretty significant. It makes Berthas have a battle, a battle roll beyond the other, the other weapons because a single hit from Bertha will use up multiple tanks of of repair gun. Repairing this one little patch of Bertha is has me already used up 50% or more than 50% of my welder gun. So that's something that you know is is a factor. So if you're going to talk about what guns are effective in combat, the Bertha is as long as you can hit somebody with. The battle cannon seems to be reasonably effective. I got a whole bunch of these low shots below the surface, and all of these uh, engine room elements are still intact. The ship is thinking there's a fire for some reason. I'm not sure why, but um, it doesn't actually harm the ship any to be doused with water. For some reason, this doesn't actually add any water into the room we're in, so whatever. But anyway, you cut it. Um, now the ship is very slowly starting to list, and I think the reason for that is because these rooms are now full enough that the tip we have is being reinforced. And I think, I think I can actually build a ballast room that automatically has a low center of mass that rights the ship as it gets more flooded. And that's what I'm going to try and do with the fourth generation, but I think I'm going to go for smaller boats. And I'm not sure it matters in a smaller boat. I, these large boats just... You can't actually do anything with them because the frame rate drops. The, the simulation speed drops to nothing. And you can't tell whether you're doing damage or not. And then running around fixing stuff is fun, but not at this level. Not when you have so much damage that fixing stuff is mostly just staring at a wall waiting for a timer to count down. So... This is a problem all voxel games have. Some have it to greater or lesser extent, but at the end of the day, a voxel damage system simulates damage by understanding the way that the voxels are laid out and trying to figure out how, what kind of physical impact they got hit with. And that's just not a very good way to simulate um, you know, a military fantasy, in my opinion. It is, however, fun to repair them when they're small and the damage doesn't take 15 minutes. Finally! Finally we're sinking! Ah! Oh, finally. There is a limit to how much um, the ballast will prevent it from tipping, but uh, that was pretty good. Worked pretty well. And we're now overturned at the bottom of the ocean. Wouldn't it be fun to try and repair it from here? See if you could lift it back up? Maybe you have a submarine with a tow line or something, and if you can get it back to the surface, you can right it by using your submarine um, to grab the edge with a tow line and flip it or something. 
Oh, there's so many cool ideas about what you could do to raise a ship after it had sunk. But the ship has to be built specifically to be sunk and then raised. I'm not sure whether I want to do that next or just make another military vehicle. Oh well, either way, it'll be fun. Have a good one.